racing, chasing and pacing program, which is uh, regularly heard after the last on a Friday night. Michael Hawke caught up with the uh, Brian Hancock. Brian Hancock, who is driving, of course, in the Inter-Dominion final in Hobart tonight. He's got two representatives as a trainer, Al Savancelot, and also Quantum LaBelle. Brian's driving Al Savancelot. Let's see what he had to say to Michael Hawke last night on racing, chasing and uh, pacing. This is Triple S. Our guest tonight needs no introduction, simply because there is not much in the game that this gentleman has not achieved, from Miracle Miles to Inner Dominions and even the odd Canberra Cup. Uh, welcome to the show, Brian Hancock. Thanks, Michael. Um, Brian, final time's come around again, and yep. you've qualified two horses again, our Savancelot and Quantum Low Bell. Yeah, mate, they've both qualified real good. They're, um, you know, they won, they won two each each, and they've done a good job, and, uh, you know, we've handled the track good here and the conditions, so... We're going into the race, you know, tomorrow night, I mean, it should be right. Well, everybody wants to say that it's a front-runner's track, Brian, and you have to be up near the Lloyd to win the race. Do you think that's right? Well, it's a great advantage, there's no doubt. We knew that before we left home, what the track size was and all that. And I have, I've had no doubt about that, but I, I, there's no doubt you get up near front. I have drawn, quite a lot drawn good. He's drawn in four, and the other horse is drawn in, and our fans are drawn in eight. But I'm quite at where I'm drawn, but I'd love to be drawn off the front with both of them, but... We've had good draws through the series and all that sort of thing, so we'll just have a bit of luck from there. Right. Um, our Sir Vancelot, he's, he's, um, do you think in the middle stages, if there's no speed on Brian, you'll be going up around them? I think I've got to do something in the race. All depends, you know. Look, Michael, into the Dominion Grand Finals, it's over 2,700. Most times there's plenty of power on. Yep. So if there's power on the race and I'm sitting midfield somewhere, like, he'll dash home pretty good. So, yep. But I can't, look, I can't predict it. Like, the media guys are asking, oh, well, what I'm going to do. I, look, I'm, it's in the lap of the gods. And, you know, with the first turns alike, if we get around the first turn and sort ourselves out, I'll be happy. Yeah, and Mark Tracy, he takes the rein on Quantum Lobel? Yeah, Mark drives Quantum Lobel. He's had a lot of success on this year, as you know. He's won the Tasmanian Championship. The, uh, the, he ran second Miracle Mile on him. He, he won the Newcastle Mile on him, and there's no problems there. I'm, I'm quite happy with Mark to drive the horse. And he's done a great job to come through the series. He's ended up with top point score again, and he was top point scorer last year in Adelaide. I think he, they said he created history. He's the first horse in the history of the Inter-Dominion to be top point scorer two years in a row. So he's done a great job. He looks very good. So, you know, we could be happy with our boat. Both our horses look super. Yeah. Um, quite, going back to our Savance lot, he won his first heat, Brian, and then he got into a bit of trouble in his second heat, and he may have missed a, a place in the final had he not have um, finished in the first one, two in the third heat. Yeah, he had to win the third heat or run second. And the, in the middle of the program, I got caught a little bit of sleep, and they made a rush, and I was sort of a bit late coming out and got a bad check, and he sort of galloped, and he had to make amends for for, um, for that. But really, uh, our Smith, I should went the series through the series undefeated, really, but that's to be. He's got in the grand final now, and he's, um, he's odds on, and he'll need a fair bit of luck from where he is. But if the race has run truly and all that sort of thing, I, I've got no doubt he'll, 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 he'll beat him will win it. Yeah, he deserves to be favourite. Like, the last year's winner, and he won the Miracle Mile, the two best races in the in the uh, country. Um, with Quantum Ray Bell, do you think that he has to lead to win, Brian? No, I don't think so. He, you know, he come home in the in the um, in the uh, Newcastle Mile. He come well from behind and beat him. No, he hadn't got a lead. I don't think he got a lead to win. But it's nice to be up front, and, and he's drawn ideally and get across and get a position where I've got to rely on a little bit of ounce of luck around the first turn. Look, I don't. I I want a bit of luck. I don't want any bad luck. No. And that's the way I look at the race. You know, I've, I've chose to drive our events a lot. The simple reason is I think he's the best horse in the series. But I need a, you know, I don't need bad luck. I just want some, a little bit of luck, it's all. So he's hoping. And you like the track down there, Brian, the Hobart Circuit? Oh, mate, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a big track. You know, it's not nothing like uh, the, the Canberra track or like that. It's, it's a small track. But as I said earlier in the interview, that we've, we, we knew that before we left home. Yeah. You know, and they're, they're guaranteed the end of the million another eight years' time, Hobart. But as I said at the function yesterday, the track's got to improve. They've got to do something with the track to make it up to standard. Is it, it was sort of comparable to the old Harold Park track, Brian? Yeah, it is a little bit. I think it's a little bit worse than that, but it is a bit comparable. It's about 750 metres, I think. Right. So that gives you some idea. But the turns are uh, quite sharp. Uh, not quite sharp, but they're well banked yep. and all that. There's no doubt they could turn to a very good half-mile track if they could sort of go ahead and do that. But, you know, we've got it here. We've got to live with that. And after tomorrow night, we load up and fly out of here on Saturday, uh, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock back into Melbourne. And everything going right, I should be home in my yard at uh, Teeny Lodge on Sunday night, 12 o'clock. With the um, Inner Dominion Trophy in your, in your saddlebag, Brian? Oh, well, I don't know. That's, you know, I've been very fortunate, as you, as you said, in Inner Dominions. I've, I've won for them. I don't want to be too greedy, but... You know, if, if it's not to be, it's not to be. But, you know, if we can go home with it, I'll be, I'll be quite happy. Right. And the main dangers, Brian, who do you think, apart from your own horse, who do you think's the main chances in the race? I think Elvin uh, 
Uh, uh, Anvil, they are, Anvil Vance is very hard, going to be hard to beat. He's got a high speed. He's drawn the back line too. You've got Anvil Stars. He hasn't won a uh, 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 Anvil Star, but he's poked through the series very good. Uh, young Justin Warwick's horse have done good the first night. They went very, very good. But they haven't sort of done the, gone through the series like they started off the first night. They've sort of got it. think they deteriorated a little bit. But he has had a week to pick them horses up. So that's their, their horses. Look, it's the best 10 horses out of 30 yep. that we've ended up with. And there's, you know, every owner owned one of them, they'd be quite happy. It wouldn't be what. Anyway, um, where, what about after the series, Brian? Where do the horses head from here? They, they have head, a spell? or Yeah, they head home to Tenny Lodge and I'll have three months off. Right. Um, yep. As you know, I've had no rain anywhere over Australia. <laughs> and uh, I definitely, our Savannah will go home for a spell. He'll have three months off. And quite a low bell. Well, I'll just look, I've just had a phone call this week. The paddock is going and the, the guy said there's uh, not a lot of feed in there. So... I don't know, but, you know, everything going right, I'd like to give him three months off. Right, yeah. But definitely our Savannah's like going home for three months off. You missed a bit her. Uh, quite a low bell, I sort of sit on the fence with him, but I, I you know, I nearly say 100% sure he'll go home for three months too. Very good. Well, they've both earned a spell. They've done a great job through the series, Brian. Yeah, they've done a great job. And as we said, um, you know, as you said, our Savannah's like Grand Circuit champion again this year, and he's, I think he's won just on the 600000 in prize money this season, and the other horse has won just on two hundred. so... You can't ask me more than that for him. No, that's great. Anyway, Brian, thanks very much yep. for your time, and um, I'd like to wish you all the best from everyone here in Canberra. Good on you. Uh, we'll all be hoping that you can get the money and bring it back to New South Wales for us, and thanks a lot again, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. That's Michael Hawke and a very informative uh, interview, a great interview there with Brian Hancock driving, of course, uh, Elsa Vancelot in the Inter-Dominion final tonight down in uh, Hobart and he also has Quantum LaBelle in the stable that's running as well, so good luck to Brian and again well done to Michael, a great interview with uh, Brian on racing, chasing and pacing, the program heard every Friday evening after the running of the last race takes you through till about midnight with the boys, they cover all three codes. Now they are moving up at the Gold Coast for the last there. 1881.